Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of Rubber City 93. I'm your host, as always, Elliot Barton. Is joining me are two guys that are ready to put this season far, far, far away into the deep reaches of our memory. Is Mr. Matt Myers and Shanir Duran the second? How are you guys doing on this uh, first Sunday of NFL football? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to at least start it off somewhat positive. I'm trying. I, I mean, where do we even start with this? Let's do the shit here. Just, just yeah. lose internet connection. Right. Uh, so he's, got, he's got he's got the best idea here. You know, cut out <laughs> right away. Very symbolic. <laughs> Very symbolic. Um, actually, actually, no, not true. We're, we're, first half of this episode will be solid, if not on, you know, if not remarkable, and then we'll just punt. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that. Just be like, yeah, we'll need to talk about it. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and take the bandaid off. First half, you had. Well, was, I mean, lineup was different, right? Yeah. We still have Bentley. Um, obviously, we know Belmar left. Uh, he's with the national team in Granada. Um, I, I, I did watch that game on Friday. He, he looked decent. He looked good with him. He had a couple of shots on goal. Yeah, they got a draw, um, which I think is a good result for them to try to stay up in the in their group. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that was a positive for him. Um, but, yeah. Let's see. You had O'Dwyer starter. On the week, it looked like a like I think Matt, you probably called it the best. It looked like a four five one or a four one four one for the most part. But yeah, Bentley on top, O'Dwyer, Neil, um, Suko, and Zhao and Zaka. Yeah, Zhao and Zaka, and then the same back four we see. Um, no real changes there with Akira starting in between a goal. First half, I was presently surprised. There were a few moments that got me up off my seat. There were a few moments where um, I thought, like, all right, we can make something happen here. We can. I start. I don't know why I do this to myself every time with the kickers this year, where something happens in the first half, and I'm like, all right, maybe we can sneak out of the point. Maybe we can sneak out of win. And it don't happen in the second half, but I, there was hope. There was yeah, hope. The first half, you know, looked decent. I think having all those midfielders in there. Especially on that small field helped out. Uh, you know, normally, you know, always like to get it really wide, yeah, you know, to the wings and try to let them do something out there, or let you know, Horns being fixed do something out there. There's not the, there's not that much out there, out there. No. Uh, you know, so I think just kind of uh, piling it, you know, you know, all nice and tight helped out, and you know, some more guys who are used to kind of some of these connected passes that. Right or wrong, Darren, you know, Mika and crew are you know set on us uh, being a possession team. So having more guys who are at least nominally possession oriented, you know, it helps. You know, there's I think a little bit cleaner, you know, passing out of the you know the back and through the midfield. I uh, didn't see as many of uh, you know the pass, uh, you know, this game probably because there's nobody up there to chase it. Uh, so fix that problem, fix itself. Uh, but I think the flip side of that is when the ball did get into some of those dangerous spots, maybe it didn't get to the guys who would have loved to have it in the you know the situations. Like I'm thinking about the time when you know Chandler got the ball, you know maybe six yards, you know from goal, you know a little bit wide, you know if it's Tierkowski, if it's Bentley when he's playing on the wing, if it's uh, you know Gordon Belmar, you know. Happy to take my chances with one of them, but 
maybe not Chandler's most natural position. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, Shanair, your thoughts on the first half? Um, first half, like, like you said, it, it looks like we were figuring things out, and and I mean, I'm kind of just to, to to piggyback off what what both of you guys said. Just it it was a very smart idea to go with that many midfielders on a hallway of a pitch. Um, so. And, and you could see, like, a lot of the players that are technically based on the formation were supposed to be wide getting involved a lot in the middle, in the middle third of the field. And the outsides were just kind of used as extra passing space and not as channels. And just the amount of players, the, just all the players that were on the field that, that kind of gave us that, that crowd in the midfield it was, looked kind of more like a four five one of sorts. And, and with, with uh, Gomiro and O'Dwyer kind of more meshing with Suko and Vignal, um sometimes even Zaka when he would venture forward a little more. So, yeah, I mean, first half looked, look, we looked like we were trying to figure certain things out. Um, it was a very even game. Uh, it was, it wasn't, the, I wasn't, the first half wasn't boring by any stretch, um, but we weren't able to convert any chances. Yeah, yeah, no, we weren't able to convert any chances. Um, there was one slightly hair raising moment, and it kind of came back to bit us in the second half, uh, right around the thirtieth minute, where Union Omaha was on a breakaway. By the way, number twenty-eight for Union Omaha, we need that. Like, we don't have that kind of speed on this team at all. Because there was a couple of times, like, where he was just zooming past our players. And it literally they were standing still. But, um, yeah, he gets the ball on the outside, cuts it back. And here I thought, I was like, all right, this is going to be the end of the game. You is going to score here. We're going to struggle to create more chances. But some way, somehow, you Omaha missed every single chance. <laughs> to put that ball into the back of the net in the 30th minute. And we close out the rest of the half um, pretty much nil-nil. Pun intended. Um, moving on in, into the second half, I, I thought we had a, I thought we had another chance to probably put our fingerprint on the game. It just felt like we were creating chances, but nobody was getting close to finishing those chances or – like, it just felt like Union Omaha's goalkeeper kind of had, like, an easy night. You know, he didn't have to worry about anything dangerous coming to him. Maybe, like, one clearance or something like that. But outside of that, he didn't really face any dangerous shots from us that I can remember. Do you guys remember anything else different? Not as, not especially, no. I mean, I think it's kind of been what our usual, you know, effective attack has been of, you know, let Alney launch a long throw you know, in there and hope something works out. Didn't work out on his long throws uh, this time, or, you know, we get a corner and somebody can you know, get a head on it that way. But yeah, if we're talking about through open play, never really felt like a goal was coming. No, it, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. So it, 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 yeah. With the way the kicks were playing, it dropped the whole game. It always felt like, Ooh, Something's coming until we reach the final third, and then all of a sudden it looks like the boys just run out of ideas. They have no idea what to do in the final third, and I think that's where our biggest issue is. Um, the, because some of the some of the work in the midfield was very good with the ball. Um, there was a point in the first half where Hornsby um, literally just carved a way through that um that left half space and just carved away through like three or four of Union Omaha's players. And then it's like, all right, he got into the box. He's almost at the byline. He just cooked four or five guys. Now what? And it was just, uh, uh, it, that was literally what it was the whole game. Some great stuff. Ooh, it looks like we're going to create a chance. And they just don't know how to create that actual chance. Yeah, it's <clears throat> nothing wrong having wingers. I mean, not wingers, fullbacks that are creative, but you can't have them be the fulcrum of your creative chances. 
you kind of looking for your wingers who are supposed to be your attacker. Your creative players do that, but this team doesn't have that. So, um, let's talk about the goals that happened. Um, first goal, 57th minute. Um, quarter kick. And I, I should have put it in the chat earlier, but um, guys, I, I don't think Akira has it anymore. I, I'll be the first to say it. I, I, just, I think it's – I think Father Time has caught up with Akira. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if this game's yeah. the game to make that judgment. I don't necessarily disagree with you, but I don't know if this is the time for that. I, th- I think it helps if, uh, you know, we don't like guys have completely free runs off corners to be able to get, you know, headers on, you know, frame. That would be nice. Well, yeah, that's true. Bentley, I don't, I don't see how Bentley lost his man and then got upset. Like the guy was in front of, you, like he was in front of you. If, if you if you put any kind of pressure on him, that header is going either over the crossbar, crossbar, or or he's missing it. He gets a free header, and what I what I'm saying is like that. I think it cares. Uh, Father times catch up with Kara. He's just simply put on a part of. Like a care of last year or years past would have made that save or at least got in a hand to it. You know, I don't know if it might, might have been a different shot or whatnot, but I don't know. It's just I don't have the same confidence in a care of making the saves like he did in years past. I mean, that's fair. I yeah. Think um, with, Go ahead. Yeah. With this one, with, with this one, I. I don't know if camera angle may have something to do with it, but it did seem suspiciously soft. Um, with with the way that ball came in, I, it did seem like I probably should have gotten that covered. But I don't know from the camera angle if it took any deflections off of anybody on the way in there. And, you know, our camera angles aren't that great in USL League One. <laughs> um, it's not like they can get a close-up from behind the goal or something. Uh, where we would really see how that ball traveled, but it, it did seem suspiciously soft. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like somebody got a piece of it somewhere because it looked like the ball ended up in the roof of the net, and just on how he headed it, it doesn't seem like it could have got there naturally. So I don't know if – but, yeah, you couldn't tell from the camera of, you know, was it you know an attempted clearance? Was it, you know, Akira getting a piece of it but not enough of it? I think that's what happened. I think Akira probably got a, a piece of it, just not enough of it to keep it out of going. It just bounces back up. So I think that's probably what happened. But yeah, yeah. I, I feel like you might be a little influenced by some of those charts we saw in you know, midweek that maybe didn't put Akira in the you know, greatest light. So uh, I, that's unconscious bias you know, there, but I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe a little bit of that you know kind of crept into your mindset. Yeah, it did. It wasn't the best. I mean, the charts that we're talking about came from um, what's his name, uh, John Morrissey, I think it is. Yeah, on Twitter. Um, but he put out some charts to just detail like how goalkeeper has been over the course of the year. Of, of uh, it was saves and something else, but Akira was near the bottom of it. And I went to go look on USL League One and just look at his save percentage and shot saved over between this year and last year, they've it's fallen off dramatically. Um yeah, that's what just has me thinking like it, it might be time to move on. Not move on and uh, we signed up for two years, but maybe see what like once again, there's no hard to see what Will got. <laughs> you got five games left. Playoffs are done. See what he got. Give him the next four games at home and just see. Like Yeah. Well, uh, an, another thing we have to always look. I'm, I, I'm looking at. I look at the stats, and I always say, "What's the, what's the big picture around these stats?" Because what do also notice with the kickers this year compared to last year is this year because our attacking threat has seriously been diminished. I don't know if there may be a possibility that what's affecting Akira's numbers is the fact that other teams are having better quality chances against him than they were last year. 
because if you're just going by saves, if it hits a hopeful ball from 20 yards out, he's going to take that out of the air. Thank you very much. That's a free save. So yes. we're, we're, there were a lot of long-range shots on the kickers last year the, compared to this year. Um, we, we, yes, we did see a few, a few screamers go in on us this season, but I feel like last year there were a lot of guys that were, there were a lot of teams we were playing against where that's all we gave them. We only gave them the low percentage chances and those are a lot easier to save. So Akira's numbers are beefed up by that. And this season it's like now where these guys are because our defense is literally under the cost the whole game because our attack isn't as, as potent is, are we getting Akira facing more high percentage shots than he was last year? Possibly, but I mean, also in that, like, I, I just don't, I don't have the same confidence in Akira just making the, the saves that he did like last year. You know, like I, he can still occasionally make like the last a super years, save. <laughs> yeah, last two. Like he can still make a super save. Like we saw it. Um, what was the home game we had recently? God, I'm drawing a blank of who we played at home recently. Um, but he made a couple of like, oh, Fuego he made a couple of good yeah. saves in that game. But it was also like some of the goals we gave up. It was like, I care should have got that. You know. Yeah, but um, well, I mean that's probably going to be a talking point in the off season that I'm sure we're going to talk about. Other than that, um, the kickers also gave up the second goal in this one. I, I don't know if if uh, you heard, but it sounded like the the, the commentator at the ESPN was saying that that he just recently signed a new deal as player coach. Yeah. Yeah, a two year deal. Yeah, you missed that last week. Yeah, that was like what a week or two ago, Matt. Yeah, at least. Yeah, at least a week or two ago. Yeah. Okay. Two, All right. Two year deal. So I, I just so, wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll be the new Ronnie Pascal. <laughs> In a sense. Um. But the second goal we gave up in this game. This one a little bit more frustrating. Um, defense gets broken away. Same guy, number 28. Um, and I will, I will say this. The back four did their part. They held up. They slowed up play. Mm-hmm. I put this more so on the midfield just because of the lack of tracking back, even so much that Luis Gill is able to take two touches, settle himself, and take a shot that catches a, a care flat-footed. But by the end of the shot, you just see three midfielders just – slowly walking up, like walking back. Like there's no sense of urgency. And then on top of that, there's no one like, and and granted as a fan, we might not see this. It has probably happened behind closed doors, but it doesn't feel like anyone is like getting on them for that accountability sake. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, What's your guys' thoughts on the second goal that the kickers gave up in this game? I, I view it the same way you did. Um, the defense did what they were supposed to do. Um, they tried to slow down the play, and they did. They did slow things down, but then it's up to our midfield three. And I think in this situation, if I am not mistaken, it was probably Suko who was supposed to be covering Gil. It, it was supposed to be tracking back and 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 tracking that that late crash in the box, and after the shot goes in, that's when he comes into frame jogging, and yeah, that's that's. I understand it's the eighty second minute, but you're only one nil down, and in terms of possession, you're doing better. I I, I would I would hope that. In that situation, I would have I would have expected that to be a little more of a sense of urgency. Like, don't let them get another one. Don't let this slip away. But I mean, we yeah. haven't seen it during this streak that this team has been on the last couple of weeks, oh, well, past two months. Just with the lack of urgency, you know, it comes back to bite us in the butt again. I mean, this is like I said earlier, it's a it's a common copy 
of the chance that they missed in the first half. It's literally just the same chance. Um, first one, we was able to get away with it. The team isn't good enough to get it at save and save twice. Um, but one thing, Matt, that I will tip my hat to to Darren and to this team is they didn't give up. You know, it's very easy for them just to be like, all right, cool, we're down to nothing. We're not going to create any more chances. But they still try to create chances. And even so much so, they got a goal off of the throw in, even though it was an own goal. They still got a goal. At least they didn't get shut out clean sheet. You know, in the process mm-hmm. of this. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm going to disagree with a portion of that. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. What wasn't that for, for, for permission? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think Darren did give up at that point. You know, you're at the 82nd minute. You know, you made no change at that point, uh, and you're you know, down a goal. Then it's probably because you don't think you have anything on your bench that can change the game by then. Because why wouldn't you have made a change at that point, right? Then you go down two nil and make five subs all at once. To me, that's saying. All right, forget this. We're not coming back. You five, go run around for 10 minutes. Yeah. Hey, who was it? It was Meacham, uh, Beckett Howell, Landon Johnson, Chris Cole. Simmons went in. Johnson didn't get in. Yeah, I bet for that Johnson. Simmons. Syracuse. Syracuse. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, no Gordon on the bench either. So, I mean, yeah. The side of the game kind of played out. Um, yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah it's nice that the guys you know hustled there at the end. We got you know fluky own goal, yeah, you know, because Chris Cole can also throw the ball far, and it's a small field. So uh, you know, your boy Shaft Brewer, you know, kept on going with his tryout, you know, for the kickers and uh, put one in his own net, you know, for us. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it is one of those things, though, with those throw-ins, especially on a narrow field like that, they're always really awkward, especially for the defense. They're really awkward to do. Just a uh, Brewer just was a victim of that awkwardness and just puts it in the back of his own net. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, outside of that, <clears throat> game ends. Now, Belmar... Um, do you think he will be back in time for the Madison game, or do you think Darren just keeps him out for that game as well? Because I think they play Tuesday. Well, if they're playing Tuesday, he's not going to be there. Well, he's not going to be ready to play Thursday. Oh, yeah. So, Belmar won't will, will be there. I'm assuming because uh, I've heard this at the watch party last night. They're not coming back to Richmond. <clears throat> they're going straight on to Madison. So, whoever this squad is, is there. Um, I don't know who else flew out, but I mean, at this point, how how does Darren get this team prepared for a derby match on Thursday night? Um, one thing that that's concerning me is no Belmar, no Gordon. The only serious winger we have is Sarakowski. And that was fine for this game when we were playing on a high school in a high school hallway rather than a than a pitch. But when we're actually playing on a regular size field, we're gonna need that with and we kinda basically only have Sarakowski. Unless he plans to Well, you got Randy Johnson know. as well. You got Landon Yeah, well. but like you said, this is a derby. And I mean, at you're going to want more experience for that. At this point, put the kid out there and see what he can do. Like, I guess. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, at, at this point, put him out there, see what he can do. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm hope I'm, I want to feel like this team is going to be up for it. Like, they're going to be proud on the line. Like, there's never been a sweep in the Hitty Derby, but I'm yeah, I'm starting to question it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's been it's been a rough a rough going for the past couple of months with with just with the way it, the things have been going for the kickers. It's just 
don't know. Now, I will say this. <laughs> the one thing that's <laughs> no, I, I mean, it's, when, when you look at... Uh, oh, yeah, I was just saying, saying? Like, when you look at the fact that literally in our past five games, we basically have almost this. the Central Valley. I, I count that as a loss with them literally holding up the table. I, I count that as a loss that that should have that shouldn't have been a three three draw. I mean, we shouldn't have been hemorrhaging goals in that game the way we did. So. Five straight poor performances, and we're going into a derby. <sighs> well, I take that the, the, the Lexington it's, game wasn't a poor performance. That should have been a draw. <laughs> I think we stand on that. That game should have been a draw. <laughs> it's just does that really that, change uh, the point though? No, but it wasn't a poor performance. I just stand on the fact that Dak had to make that foul. <laughs> but no, it doesn't change it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I guess if you want to say the only thing that's kind of in our favor, slightly in our favor, is that Madison is coming on on five games uh, winning streak as well. Like August 12th, they lost to the one Knox, Then they lost to Tormenta 4-2. 4-4 draw with Fuego. A 3-1 loss to Chattanooga. And then another nil nil draw with one Knox. But in that game, they had two red cards to uh, Cheney and Chiro. So they'll be without those people. Um, coming into the game with came with us, so yeah, it, it's I don't know. I, I I'm trying to find some positive that, but I'm struggling. I mean, yeah. weird stuff happens in these games sometimes, you know. So maybe we'll get the zero zero out of there, and maybe you know steal one off of a throw or a corner somewhere along the way. Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah. Um, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, um, yeah. Do you think Akira gets to start in this? Probably. Okay. I'm assuming it's going to be the same back four. Yeah. I'm cool seeing a midfield three of Zaka, Neil, and uh, Jao. Yeah. And Shinner, to your point. To put Sirikowski and Landon out there and Bentley and, and gotta go that way. Yeah, I, I think yeah. And 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 even though there was a, not a lot of products with what we saw from Bentley is if if Sirikowski goes in guns blazing and, and Landon runs around like he does, along with how dogged Bentley is on a high press, we might be able to rattle their defense. Uh I don't know. I'm 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 hoping because th- that's the one thing that I noticed from Bentley is that workhorse mentality. That that there were several times in this game against Union Omaha where he literally was was bullying their back four. Like whenever they get the ball, rambling to get away from him, and and not necessarily get the not not even just get the ball away from him, just to get away from him because he was just on their tails literally any time the ball was back there he was trying to jump on top of them several times he stole the ball in the final third from either this one of the center backs or the full back you pair that with Sarakowski and Landon maybe something might come of it if the midfield cooperate mm-hmm. um they also have a new midfielder for uh, that pink team uh, with Ozzy Ramos. Um, so that's the new addition for them. <sighs> Any predictions from you guys on how this game is going to turn out? I, I don't I think it'll be 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. We'll, we'll be like, oh, that wasn't a bad half. You know, I, want, I wonder if they can keep it up. We'll get into the 60-something minute. It won't be kept up. And then we'll just you know be hoping for set pieces. Yeah, because I've watched this movie for the last. Sounds two about months. right. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, sounds about right. right. Sounds about right. Um, I'm, I'm officially, I, I have gotten away from. Oh, the team just needs a soft rebuild. To it's it's time to gut this team. 
just gut it. Like at the core of it, and, and I don't know attitude wise. I I don't. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard of any infighting or anything like that. Just seeing what well, I've the, watched. The, on the, the, the culture is great. Haven't you heard? You know, maybe a little too much. The culture is great. Yeah, like uh, just from watching it, it is 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 time. It's time just to clean house. Just start a new. Yeah. Because honestly, like, to be real with you, this team has not looked good since that loss against Chattanooga in the playoffs. You, like you're just you're just claiming they played well two games ago against Lexington. Well, in, in the midst of this losing streak, yes. <laughs> but and that's what a draw, but yeah, like they haven't. They haven't looked right since then. Like I don't know if this but, team was punch strong coming into the season still or what. But no, I don't. I don't think so because when you look at how they lost that playoff game, we have different issues now, and it, it's like abs- actually to the contrary. We started off the season completely different, complete with completely. No, 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 no. Different. I'm, not, I'm not talking about like on the field. So I'm just talking about like mentally. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, you you lose a game like that, like you know, can you overcome it? Can you clean the slate, get back focus? And I don't think that's it. I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, just... they would have been hiding that for a long time. Because yeah, yeah, maybe so. They were a playoff you know, team the whole first half of the season. They they weren't like spectacular, but they were solidly in the playoff spots for an entire half of the season, and then the bottom completely fell out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it really just the depth in this team is not there. Like it's not. And that's something that needs to be addressed for next year along with the attack and play, but yeah. I mean, Shanir Matt, where do you guys fall in? Do you think it's a soft reboot or are you are, are you more aligned with burning down and just start anew? Um, I think one one of the one of the elements that we're seeing here is the situation with Emmy. Uh, I think one of two things: either he's been found out, or he don't got it no more. And I don't think the rest of the team realized that for most of this season, and they are still completely depending on him to score the goals. And it's like you're depending on someone who's either been found out or no longer has it to score your goals. We're not going to be doing all that well. And lo and behold, here we are towards the end of the season and we are in 10th. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we need to, we, we need to find a striker who's hot. We need to find someone for those how to find the net. And when we do that, then there's a possibility that maybe the other pieces kind of fall into place. Maybe we get one or two reliable wingers who can also pop and goal. So now we, we condition the team not to rely on one person for goal because that that's what it's been for the last three years with, with Emmy. It's like, Three-time MVP winner, three-time Golden Boot winner. He's going to score our goals, so it's 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 all on him. I mean, yeah, and credit to last year. I mean, you had multiple goals. You had Belongas. You had Bentley putting in goals. You had Gordon, uh, Neil. You had guys putting in goals. Even Ethan Bryant. But this year, that has to happen as the at the heights, uh, Matt. What about you? Where where you lie with it? I mean, I think they could use a refresh. I don't think Darren will do that. You know, I think Darren has his boys. I think you know he's too concerned about culture. You know, to worry about uh, you know any of that. Uh, you know, anything else? You know, look, look who's getting these long term contracts. You know, does Chris Cole need a long term contract? No, but he's one of his Washington State boys, so he gets it. You know, I don't have anything personal against Chris Cole, but is that the guy, is that the priority to lock down? Come on. And that's not just a right now saying that, you know, in the off season, if you had said, Hey, there's going to be seven, eight guys, you know, getting locked down to multi-years. Is that a guy you're putting at the top of your list? 
No, they're absolutely. No, he brought, yeah, yeah, he's gonna, you know, if he brings back, brave, yeah, brings back David Olson again. The hell's that? Yeah, so yeah, this is what year two of Dave Olson. He still has yet to see the field. Yeah, I mean he's he scored in the uh, Open Cup game last year against the amateur team. Cool. Uh, so you know, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's a is, is Darren's uh, you know Washington State well running dry because he's been you know gone from there you know, too long. He doesn't you know know all the you know, guys coming up anymore. I don't know. Uh, you know he talks about you know how you know he's this is a hard season for him because he's a winner. Is he? Or did he, you know, have one good team? You know, because Tucson wasn't a winner. First year here, they fell apart at the end of the year when they were locked into that top two spot and then just absolutely crapped it, you know, for most of the seat for the last six games. You know, you know 2021, they want, had to go on a late run to get in the playoffs, and they still tried their hardest to blow that at the end of the year, you know, out in, huh. you know Omaha and Tucson. I'm not going to lie, man. That was probably – that is probably still my most, like, favorite memory of since doing that podcast, just the elation of knowing that Toronto blew it so we got in and we didn't have to win. It was hilarious. But, you know, you look at last year too. Okay, yes, we last year went mostly well. Go back and look down the stretch, see what those results actually were. Yeah, the final stretch, Yeah. A lot of a lot of draws. Yeah, yeah. The, had the one win at Madison. Well, so yeah, I mean, Darren talks a lot of stuff, but you know, yeah, he's just oh, blame me. But there's never any details that come out with that, are there? He doesn't talk about how he doesn't get them, you know, prepared or what he's mm-hmm. going to do to fix it. He talks, some, you know, empty platitudes. You know, yeah. so yeah, I, I think know. you know what did Connor? What has Connor Capaletti brought to this team? You know, is Mika focused mm-hmm. this year with his, you know, extra role with all the youth stuff? Yeah, I think the coaching staff got, you know, get a hard look at this because, you know, a non talented team doesn't fluke into six, six, and four, you know, to start the year, right? You know, you yeah. say you might be able to fluke into a little above your weight. You don't fluke that high up right now. You know, so yeah. it's on the coaching staff that this team is absolutely crashing and burning to, I haven't looked this up, but I what I have to imagine is on scene levels, you know, in this league, you know, I, I'd be shocked if you know eleven games without a win isn't at least at the very close to breaking a record if it's not already broken one. What's the coaching staff doing, you know, to fix all this other than preaching about culture and preaching about possession, which as we talked about a couple episodes ago, you know, is a stat that is consistently proven to be ineffective in this league. Yeah. Right, we we you look at the stats right with this game. We had the blind share of the possession. Did we win? No. Did create? Did we create more chances? No. Yeah, and I'll just cap it all this because we'll probably go talk about this more later on. The last couple of years, you know, been at games and there's been a couple of people. You know, won't won't say who they are. Just ask me. Like, what do you think about the coach? And I've been like, well, you know, not bad. Not, you know, not bad. And now I'm thinking, you know, back and wondering, wonder if they were, you know, trying to have that be a leading question somewhere. Mm-hmm. Huh. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of questions to be asked in this offseason. And I mean, it's going to be a pivotal year because you can't have, you know, maybe this year is just a, a year gone awry. You know, days don't break your way, whatever. But if, if you get these same results in next year, then yeah, this is definitely going to be some different questions. Um, yeah, I guess we can say it depends on what what happens this off season. What are we going to see coming into next season? How how is how is the coaching staff going to react to the? The collapse of this season. Yeah. What is the club going to do? Like in terms, of what will the scouting, you know, acquiring new players? Where are we going to try and strengthen? Where are we going to try and get that? How are we going to do it? And if we come up with a bunch of a, a list of 
no names that we're just trying to get in there just to fill the numbers, then we know it's like, all right, you, you guys are out of ideas. Well, we won't know their names anyway because it is love. You never know who you're kidding. <laughs> but no, nah, I get your point. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, I'll, I'll, I'll just finish my little commentary off with the style of play. I think this year most resembles the Bulo year, right? With this, yeah, you know, yeah, odd desire for, for right, and not a great season overall, right? And you know, I think. You know, personality elements aside, we could probably agree that all right, it was probably right move to move along from David. Is it where I thought it was? So I'll, I'll own that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that team in 28 games had 32 points. This team has played, I believe, 27 games this year. Yeah. 28 points. So if, even if they win on Thursday, they'll be a point behind that team's pace. And it's funny enough, when you look at that 2019 team and this team, there's a lot of similarities. Like, no I, no sense of idea attacking-wise, very poor transitional defending, giving up loose goals left, right, and center. Um, a team that looks out of his depth, a coach that looks out of his depth. Uh... Both teams have very bad losers, even though the 29 team had the seven straight games with no goals scored <laughs> and losses. This team at least is scoring in losses and a couple of draws mixed in there. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of similarities, and it's not getting any better. Um, you know, it's just, yeah. I'm it's sorry, listen, we're not trying to be Debbie Downers, but it's it's the reality of it. You know, it's the reality of it. Um, we said we weren't going to do 50 minutes, and look at us, we're almost there now. Um, um, it, is there anything else to even talk about at this point, though? I don't know. I don't feel like it is. Oh, really. well, <laughs> I will say this, though, that um, the Red Army, despite all of this, is still going to be coming out strong. They're having a uh, prom season tailgate. Um, nope. So if you want to know more about that. Oh. What you say? I think I think it's framed as homecoming. Also oh, seems like homecoming. a stupid idea. Also seems like a stupid idea to me, but whatever. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, someone gotta have fun in that stadium, and why not? Why not be us? Like you always say, Matt. Despite what's I, going I, I on, I fun the stadium. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we gotta have fun with it. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. Look, may the chips fall where they where fall where they may. Um. At this point, I, I just want the kids to do good. Like, I just want to watch the kids, see what they got, and that's it. Um, anything yeah, else? Yeah, it, you it's, no, it's all about the kids right now. It's all about the, the young talent where, where they can get, get some games under their belts before we go into the off season. Yeah. Um, so as listeners, we just want to say thank you for taking the time of your day for listening to our show. Um, we look, you know, Dover this show is very positive and we try to give you the, the outlook of this team in every which way we can, but it's hard to do that at this point. Um but with that being said, uh we just want to say thank you guys for taking time of your day for listening to our show. If you want to keep up with the show, uh, just make sure to follow us at rivercity93.com on Instagram, Twitter, uh, I think it's called X now, uh, or on your favorite podcast app. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, once again, we will holler at you guys next week. Be easy, be safe as always, and up the ruse. <laughs>